Hi guys, it's Crystal Bretz here. Um, I am so, so happy to be able to talk to you guys about uh, Reillusion's new character creator, 3. Um, it's completely amazing. Um, I want to thank ArtStation for letting me do this walkthrough uh, of, of building a character. And uh, I hope you guys in enjoy the process. And... Uh, you know, the thing that I've loved the most about using Character Creator while I'm grabbing reference um, would be, I guess, the, you know, the simplicity of everything and how fast it speeds up your workflow. Like here, you can see I'm just quickly changing the proportions. Um, you start with their base mesh and you just quickly change the proportions to uh, match your concept, which you'll, you'll drag in. Um, and it should just pop right into the scene, super simple. Uh, and then you'll just go in and, and change your proportions to match uh, exactly what your concept is. And it's, it's pretty quick. Um, you'll just see me adjusting things here and there and making things look okay. And then, and then from here, you, you would go in uh, like refining the face a little bit fixing, fixing everything. It's awesome because you kind of have the freedom to adjust everything. Um, the size of the eyes, the size of the ears, the, the nose. You have full control. You can then bake it down afterwards um, so you don't change things or you can keep it open so that you can change things and revert back to the original model. So here I, I go zed it straight into ZBrush, which is super useful. So now I've got the main proportions of my concept that I wanted to go with. And uh, here I'll be just sculpting all the extra detail that wasn't in the original base mesh, uh, adjusting things. And this is super, super useful. Um, you didn't, Cause then you already have a mesh that's already rigged, um, used for posing. So you just can't change the the UVs um, or or the vertex order at all for this for this to work properly, but other than that, it's super super fun and super useful. I think this has been the fastest character I've ever made, uh, just because of the ease of having a rig already posing it. You know, once it's done, this can actually go straight right into animation. Um, right after you're finished. So here I'm just adding a lot of wrinkles to the face, making them look uh, a little older. So those are always fun to animate, it's old faces. Love them. So here I'm uh, creating the pants for for my character, or at least I'm starting to. Um, and the, the cool thing about Character Creator is that you can actually create Geo inside of ZBrush. Um, and you could create the entire pants if you wanted to, or the entire outfit, whatever you like. And you can go Z that back right into the Character Creator and have clothes that will already work for your, your character. You can also poly paint and it'll take your poly paint data or sorry, when you, when you export your textures and then you can pop those textures back into Character Creator. So here I'm just adding more detail to the hands. Never have too much detail on anything. <laughs> absolutely love hands. They're just so fun. One thing you do have to keep in mind is if you want to change any major proportions, like let's say you had go eat it back into ZBrush and uh, you felt like you maybe needed to change the the, the height of the neck or, or the, the arms. You'll just need to change that in Character Creator before you uh, pop it back in or you might have some problems with, with the rig. So 
super awesome because they already have fingernails and everything, all the little details, they're already all planned out for you so you don't have to worry too much about that stuff. Your base mesh is already as perfect as can be and you're just kind of uh, sculpting as much detail on top of that as possible. So you can also create accessories and uh, more clothing in ZBrush. Um, I, I decided to uh, create uh, the pants inside of ZBrush uh, just to show the, the ease and the speed of creating your clothes inside of ZBrush uh, and then popping it straight into Character Creator. Uh, but then for the extra props and necklaces and uh, extra little things like that, I created in an external software, so I, I used Maya for this. And then you can just bring those straight back into ZBrush and go Z them also back into Character Creator. Super simple and fast. So you can really work with, with whatever whatever methods you, you'd like to, but they make it really, really easy to go from, from Character Creator to ZBrush. I spent a lot of time on this face because uh, that was the one of the main focuses for this character was this this beautiful old face. The thing I loved is that you can actually move the eyelids quite a bit, and you'll have a, a, a quite a bit of leeway. Uh, to, to kind of move them wherever you like um, in ZBrush. And when you pop it back into Character Creator, it doesn't really affect the, the blink shapes and everything too much. Uh, and if it does, there's an external, external software um, that you can, you can create new, new eye blink shapes and everything to adjust to your new character's eyes. And this also works for really, really extreme, extreme stylized characters too. Um, yeah, you can, you can basically create ridiculous proportion characters and it will still work fantastic. So here you can see I'm, I've decided to create one of the pendants uh, for the necklace inside of ZBrush, just to also show how uh, useful it can be to just go Z between the two. You can definitely do this in an external external software as well, like Maya, to, to get some more uh, hard edges, or you can use uh, ZBrush's um, modeler tool, and uh, you'll totally get a, a more crisp result. I was kind of going for more of a, a worn down organic metal look, um, but using the, the Z modeler tool will also also work well. So I created like a, a start for, for, uh, from the ZBrush uh, tools to create like the, the belt and everything. Um, then I decided to bring that back into Maya to kind of polish and, and clean up that belt to, to a more final look. I did the same with uh, trying to, to grab these chains here, but in the end I scrapped those, so. Now I knew I wasn't going to see the uh, the the legs too much, so I didn't actually concentrate too much on that. Um, oh yeah, so here's a, a little bit of footage of inside Maya where I'm kind of building out the boots. I felt like those would be a little bit hard to uh, build in ZBrush 
doable, but um, it still would have been a, a bit of a, a challenge for, for, for me in my comfort zone, I think. So, so I, I brought myself back into Maya for this, and uh, I also kind of uh, adjusted, yeah, the belts, the necklace... Um, and then I also used Maya for my UV layouts, um, cause I find I can get a, a more clean result and I could put things exactly where I want them. So here I am uh, grabbing some belts from, like, so, sorry, some belt buckles from the belt just to reuse and recycle some of the, the things I've already already done. So that was super, super useful. Um, and I just grabbed those from, like, the insert multi-mesh uh, brush from ZBrush, and uh, they, they worked wonders so I wouldn't have to build new pieces. If you're looking for little shortcuts, that's useful. I also did the same for this belt buckle, except I, I adjusted some of the, uh, the look. I adjusted the look of the belt buckle once I took it out of ZBrush to match better to the the belt buckle in my concept. And if I haven't mentioned earlier, this wonderful concept is called Leo Bonhart by Dmitry Skortsov. So check that guy out. He's got some really cool stuff. I was really drawn to this one because of the, the old looking face and the, the Witcher-esque feel. So it was super, super fun to do. Um, now here I am just exporting everything just to pop it all back into ZBrush. So once I was finished in Maya, that's a good time to bring it all back in just to add some high res detailing. Um, I gave them all UVs before I popped it out. So it was all dealt with and done and laid out and good to go. So now um, I didn't actually adjust anything on the pants. So the pants are 100% still in ZBrush. Um, just to show exactly how you can build everything out um, without having to even use an external software at all. Just ZBrush and Character Creator and you've got some pants. I did use Substance Painter for the pants. Um, but for, for modeling them, I mean, you know. <laughs> So here I'm just adding extra details, um, lots of folds to the boots. Love folds. And detailing up the pants a little bit. The more baggy look. I always kind of like to add a little bit of color to my, my ZBrush models to kind of give it more of the the proper feeling of my concept uh, while I'm kind of sculpting everything because I feel like it gives me a better idea of how things should look in the end. I feel like sometimes when you just look at your gray model, it's a little hard to get an idea of if it's matching your concept. Just a little, little trick of the trades. So here I'm kind of just creating the rest of the, of the pants. I've created like the belt loops um, again, all in, all in ZBrush, kind of positioning everything. <laughs> Some more folds. 
And so now I'm just going to create the, the paneling for the, I guess not paneling, the little fabric pieces that are draping down on the, the sides of his pants there. And doing another another pass on the face. Sometimes I also like to add, you know, just a little bit of a pupil so I can get a, a sense of how, how big the eyes feel on my model. Actually, sorry, all the time I like to add my pupils. <laughs> then you know exactly where you are when you're when you're sculpting eyes to make sure that they match exactly. So here I'm adding some more some more details with wonderful texturing X Y Z, uh, uh, displacements or I guess alphas, um, just to get a little more something when I export my normal maps. And a lot of it won't stay in here, but I I still gave it a shot just to see how much I could get out of it uh, while I drag that into Substance Painter and work on top of everything. Because the face was my main focus, I didn't concentrate too, too much on the rest of the body for the details. I figured I could just paint that in in Substance Painter. All right, so now I've finished all of my high-res detailing and I'm just moving into, um, so I was I was just in Marmoset for like a second in my, my screenshots here, but uh, I was in there for quite a bit just baking out my maps. Um, so I brought my, my low res and my high res versions into Marmoset and baked out my maps, then brought those maps into Substance Painter here, where I use those to kind of, um, instead of having to bake the normals out in Substance Painter, I find you get like a cleaner result in Marmoset. So now I'm using those to drive the smart materials in here, and so that I can view my high res model on my low res mesh. So I kind of just layered some dirt on top of the pants because this guy just seems like a really dirty guy. Um, making sure my metals feel like metal. Um, what I really liked as well is that uh, Character Creator has the iRay rendering plugin. So 100% uh, of the time, whatever you see in the Substance Painter iRay renderer, you will also see in your character creator render. So whatever you're painting here will translate perfectly because it's exactly the same renderer. So you don't have anything to worry about. So here I'm just adding more of the, uh, so they have the texturing XYZ normal maps actually uh, inside of Substance Painter that you can layer in. So that's kind of what I'm doing for the body and painting in uh, some masks to kind of you know, for, for just like the belly and, and the chest and everything. I decided to go for more of a hand painted look as well to the textures. Figured it would kind of stick with the stylized, um, stylistic, realistic version of this character. And I did have to paint this into separate texture sets because the body is uh, on a separate texture set than the arms and the legs and the face. So you'll get maximum resolution out of um, all these body parts. But the downside is that you have to paint them all as separate texture sets. Um, if you're using a software like Mari, you don't have to really worry about seams, but if you can... Uh, be smart, use a lot of triplanar projections. You don't really have to worry about too much uh, too much seams inside of Substance Painter as well. There's ways to, to get around this. I think my favorite part about painting this guy is painting the scars. I just love painting scars. They're just so much fun. They're so gross. <laughs> Again, the key to kind of, especially when you're hand painting things, is have tons of reference for everything. So even colors of veins and, and scars and scar tissue and, 
you know, even the different colors on the face when you're painting is important. Um, the different color changes from the neck to the body, um, in the stomach, you'll get different shades. Uh, you know, your ears are a little bit more red, your nose is more red, places that get a little more flush and blush, you like to pay attention to. I kind of added an overall dirt to his skin as well. I felt like it gave it like more of a, a uniform feel. And, and again, I said he kind of feels like a guy who'd be outside rolling in the dirt. I don't know. <laughs> so here I'm kind of adjusting all the, all the normals for the face. Um, again, painting, painting out masks and everything for where I feel like the, the details should, should lie and how small they should be and and all that. Also, think a thing to keep in mind is, um, uh, you know, the 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 dark blue and purples under the eye bags. I added those extra exaggerated because this guy looked really tired, really wrinkly. That skin is naturally thinner, so it looks a little bit um, more more blue. I also painted in his uh, five o'clock shadow um, as as well. And I feel like that sold sold that a little bit better. So here I'm testing the eye ray render just to make sure that it's exactly what I, I want to see inside of Character Creator before I export all my maps. And they're done. So then after that, you should uh, bring these into Character Creator and just plug them all in. So here is me uh, gozying back my things into Character Creator. So it will update your mesh automatically with all of your sculpted details, and it'll bring inside the new mesh. So the earrings, the, the, um, the charms, the dagger, and everything like this will, will all come in as well as long as it's in ZBrush, and you hit Go Z All. Um, you'll have to adjust some of the, the props locations. I find they, they didn't snap exactly where, where I felt like they should have, but I feel like that's just because they were uh, uh, brought into the scene as an accessory and not as clothes. If it's clothes, it will bind straight to the rig and you'll have no problem with the location. Um, so here's just me bringing in the textures for everything as well. So I'm just kind of bringing in everything, making sure it, it works properly and fits uh, straight from Substance Painter into Character Creator. And it crashed. <laughs> so when you're loading in your maps, a uh, thing to keep in mind is, you know, try to keep uh, any external stuff as well that you add in. Uh, every single object has its own material. So you'll have to, let's say if you have I had the boots and the dagger and all the metals and the chains and the earrings and everything was all sharing one texture set. So each one of those objects had to be assigned the, the textures every time. Um, I don't think that there's a way to link the materials at this time, but who knows, maybe, maybe in the future there'll be a way to link it so you don't need to uh, import your, your textures one at a time for each material. But for now, just keep that in mind that, uh, that you'll need to do that. All right, so you can see I'm testing out some poses already. Of course, there's some issues. We gotta go through and fix the waiting for some things here. Um, convert some stuff to accessories and, you know, just kind of do some adjustments. 
So I found that uh, my eyelashes were not, uh, not close enough to the eyelids, so I adjusted some things. Here you can see they've got some built-in light rigs, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Your poses are all built in, and you can just pose away right away. So here I was kind of working on some X-Gen hair. Uh, I didn't uh, finalize this, but um, it's totally doable. So you can actually see when you bring this into Character Creator, uh, it totally handles the hair as well. And you have a separate weight option for your rig. So when you bring the hair in, you can change it to a uh, properly binded as a hair object. Um, you can also, when you're doing the animation cycles in iClone, you can add dynamics to the hair, which is an extra plus. So if you're doing any crazy head movements or uh, even just with a vocal track or anything like that, um, you'll have the hair moving, which is just an extra plus. Super fun. So once I laid out my hair, did a quick pass for hair, popped that into Character Creator. I just did the same where I go zed it back, but I didn't update anything else in the scene. I just uh, just go zed the hair back in, and there it is. So it's popped right in, and uh, then from here you can load in your diffuse and your opacity from. Uh, so I created this with. Uh, with XGen, so I just created my XGen chunks and rendered them out um, and then lined them up inside of Maya. So your UVs will line up perfectly. So when you load in your diffuse and your opacity maps, they should perfectly pop in like this. And yeah, if you get more time, just yeah, polish the hair. Here's me testing some, some faces. So this is an eye clone, um, and, and you can also just go Z straight, or sorry, not go Z, but uh, hit the <laughs> fast track button and pop this guy right into eye clone right away so you don't have to do any exporting. It'll just go right in. And you can test out these walk cycles, and you can really see your character come to life right away, and you don't even have to really do a whole lot. To be honest, I feel like I, I barely adjusted anything. Um, the only main issues you have to consider is maybe if you've got props, like for this character, uh, for example, he's got the chains on his belt and the dagger on his hip, and you can create animation keyframes as, you know, for each cycle to make sure that the there's there's no crashing involved when, when that moves. Um, as for everything else, though, it's perfect. It's so cool. You do ninja kicks and walk cycles and everything. And you don't have to worry about it. You also have like, uh, you can do like a voice track load in as well, which is super awesome. And they also have a mocap section as well. So here's me adding the dynamics to the hair just to test it out uh, with, with uh, a walk cycle. So here's another final test. I'm just t testing some uh, facial expressions. So the getting angry and happy and disgust. Um, you can just see how fast it, it comes to life. And, and all these expressions, uh, I'll also show you uh, when we did a mocap test, uh, which you can do straight inside of uh, iClone as well, and actually use your face <laughs> and, and animate your character. See, it's really fun to see your character come to life. So this is the, the facial mocap, and uh, it's super fun to see that you can just easily sculpt from ZBrush and pop this right into uh, Character Creator and then back into iClone, and you don't really have to do a whole lot. You just, bam, have a character. <laughs> super, super fun. All right, guys, so there you have it. Um, 
I had a lot of fun making this character with Character Creator. It was just such a fast, fast process, and I just really wanted to spread the word and, and you know, let you guys have at it. It's the f fastest process, probably, to create a character and animate it that I've ever seen. So, um, go have fun. <laughs>